All right, today we're going to start um, factoring, and factoring is going to take up the bulk of this unit. So we've covered um, classifying, addition and subtraction, and multiplication. Those are pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Factoring is really the undoing of multiplication or the opposite of multiplication when we're talking about polynomials. Instead of, so it's essentially division, trying to break it back into smaller pieces, but we're calling it factoring. So factoring is the opposite of multiplying for polynomials. We're going to discuss several methods for factoring polynomials in this unit. So this is just the first of many. Um, the first is by taking out the greatest common factor, which we shortened to GCF, um, of the terms of the polynomial. This is a monomial that divides evenly into each term. So go ahead and pause if you need to so you can get this first um, slide written down and then unpause when you're ready to move on. So our steps for factoring by greatest common factor. Um, our first step is to write the prime factorization of each coefficient. Um, then write all powers of variables as products and find the greatest common one. Now this might be a longer process when you're first starting out, but as you get better at it, you don't really have to write out all the factors to figure out what it would be. But the key here is that you always want to take out the largest factor possible. So just because um, they have two factors in common, you want to make sure that you're taking out as much as possible each time. So that then what you're left with doesn't have anything in common anymore. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at our example here. So what this means is it says write the prime factorization of each coefficient. So that's of 18. So 18 could be um, 9 times 2. And 2 is a prime number so that one can stop. But 9 could be 3 and 3. So that's what it means by prime factorization. We have 2, 3, and 3. Step 2 is to write all powers of variables as products. So you would have 2 times 3 times 3. And you have 3 x's and 1 y. For 27, we could do 9 and 3. And then again, 9 is going to be 3 and 3. So this one's prime factorization is 3 times 3 times 3. And then I have 2 x's and 4 y's. So we want to take out everything they have in common. So I'm going to highlight here. It says find the greatest of the common factors. So they both have two threes. They both have two x's. And they both have one y. And that's as much as I can take out. What's left that's not highlighted, they do not have in common. So my greatest common factor for these two monomials would be 9, because 3 times 3 is 9, x squared y to the first. Okay, that's the largest amount I could take out of both of these. And then what I'd be left with is 2x and 3y cubed. Right, so here's another um, example, 16a to the sixth and 9b. So if I have 16, that would break down into 4 and 4, and those would break down into 2 and 2. Um, 9 would have 3 and 3. And then here I have six A's, here I have one B. So if I were to write all of this out, and again, as you get good at it, you don't need to write it all out every time. Um, but if you're not sure, it's always helpful if you do. And then this one would be three times three times B. Honestly, these have absolutely nothing in common. Their prime factors aren't the same, their variables aren't the same. So we would say that there is no, G actually, instead of saying there's no GCF, their greatest common factor is one. So I take that back. 10, our greatest common factor is 1, okay? Everything has a common factor of 1, and it's the only one we have in this case. All right, 10x cubed, 4x to the fifth. Now, I'm not going to do this whole written out process because really I don't want you to do it um, unless you have to either. Um, but if I have 10 and 4, the largest number, largest coefficient or factor I could take out of 10 and 4 is 2. Okay, so there's 2. For my x's, there's 3 here and 5 here, so the most I can take out would be 3. And then y is only in this um, monomial and not in this one, so I can't take out any y's. So my greatest common factor is 2x cubed. Now if that wasn't obvious to you, go ahead and make the factor tree, expand it out. That's what you'll be left with, 2x cubed. Okay? Now, really what we want to get down to is factoring using the greatest common factor. So we've identified how to find the greatest common factor, and now we want to talk about using it to actually divide our polynomial into two pieces, or two, um, in this case, 
a monomial and a binomial. Um, so for my greatest common factor, three and four don't have any um, coefficients, constants in common, except for one. But I could take out an x, because here I have x squared and x, I could take out an x. So if I want to take out an x, what I'm doing then is I'm dividing each of these pieces by x, because almost like reverse distribution if you want to think of it that way. So 4x squared divided by x is just going to get me back to 4x. And negative 3x divided by x is going to get me back to negative 3. And this is what our final answer would be. We're going backwards from what we were doing when we were multiplying. Now I have a monomial times a binomial, um, which is essentially our division of polynomials. So here I have three terms. So my GCF has to be um, for all three terms. So I have 10y cubed, 20y squared, and negative 5y. I want, so first let's think about our coefficients here. I, 5 would go into all three. And it's got to be the biggest one that will because I can't get any larger than my smallest number. Um, so my GCF is 5. And then let's talk about our Y's. It looks like I have 3, 2, and 1. So the most I can take out is 1 because it has to be a part of every term. So my greatest common factor here is 5Y. So if I take 10Y cubed divided by 5Y, I'll be left with 2Y squared. Okay, 10 divided by 5 is 2 y cubed, take away a y, is y squared. For our 20, 20 divided by 5 is 4. y squared divided by y is just y. And then negative 5y divided by 5y is negative 1. And when you're finished, if you've taken out the biggest piece possible, what you're left with in your second polynomial, or in this case a trinomial, shouldn't have anything else in common. So 2y squared, 4y, and negative 1 don't have anything else in common other than 1. And on here, 4x and 3 don't have anything in common other than 1. So that's a good way to check that you've taken out the biggest factor possible. All right, a couple more examples here. So for this one, my greatest common factor, I think, would be 4x. Okay, 4 goes into both evenly, and so does x. Um, and it is the largest one I can take. So if I take 4x out, negative 12x divided by 4x is negative 3. Negative 8x squared divided by 4x is negative 2x. And also along those lines, I could have taken out a negative 4x and then these would have both been positive. That would also be correct. All right, here's another one. 5x squared plus 7. So in this one, um, there are no greatest common factors. Just kind of what we talked about a couple slides ago. My greatest common factor in this case is just one. And when that happens, I really can't make this any simpler. So I don't want to put a one on the outside and this on the inside. I'll just say that this is now fully factored. Okay, there's nothing else I can do because they don't have a greatest common factor in common. Now, what also happens or what we will want to figure out is what the solutions are to equations sometimes. So everything we've been working up with up until now in our notes have been what we call expressions. There's no equal sign. There will be times, especially when we get into our last unit of the year, quadratics, where we'll actually want to solve these. And when we're solving polynomial equations, we're using something called the zero product property. So this is something that's already factored for us, and we're going to start there. But then we want to know what x is equal to. And when we're dealing with these polynomials, you usually have the number of solutions as your largest exponent. So um, this would have a degree of 2 if I multiplied it out, so there's going to be two solutions. Or if I had, um, let's go back, let's see. This has two solutions because its largest exponent is two. But really, ultimately, this one would probably have three solutions because its largest exponent is three. Most commonly, we'll see two um, in algebra one, but you might see more in the future. So here, this is already factored for us. We don't need to factor it. But how we figure out what would make this equal to zero is we can set each piece equal to zero because if this piece is zero, it doesn't matter what it's multiplied by, the whole thing will be zero. Or if this piece is zero, again, it won't matter what this is because the whole thing will be zero. 
Um, so that's what say, the zero product property is saying. If the product of two real numbers is zero, then at least one of them is zero. And to figure out what our solutions are, we would do 2x equals zero, which is going to make x zero, and x minus four is zero. It's going to make x four. So my two solutions in this case are zero and four. All right, and sometimes they're obvious and sometimes they're not. Um, so like on this one, Another way you can think about it is what would make this zero? So three minus three would be zero. So X is three. And what would make this zero? Nine minus nine is zero. So my other solution is nine. So one more slide here. Other times it's not so obvious. Like this one, I can't really just guess and check what would make it zero. And when you can't guess and check, I'm gonna go ahead and just set it equal to zero and solve. So if I subtract 5, I'll have 3s equals negative 5. And if I divide by 3, I'll have negative 5 thirds. And for the other one, it'll be similar. I would start by subtracting 8 and then dividing by 5. So my two solutions here are negative 5 thirds and negative 8 fifths. All right, this is another example where it would have three solutions. So this original polynomial had a highest degree of three. So this one's pretty easy to kind of guess and check. So this would make two would make this zero, negative six would make it zero, and negative eight would make that zero. But if it's not obvious, set it equal to zero and solve. Last one for today, b plus 7 squared equals 0. So this is going to be an example where you might have an exponent of 2, but it's only going to have one solution because both solutions are negative 7. Another way to write this out would be b plus 7 times b plus 7 equals 0. Both of my solutions are negative 7, so we just need to write it the one time. Okay, that's the end of our notes for today, and then we have an assignment on delta math.